So the conversation that we have today is a conversation that I feel that if we are not talking about, then we are not being completely honest with ourselves. If I've met 10 Christian girls in my lifetime, at least seven, including me, has gone through this dilemma. So there's no pretense here. Let's talk about it. Should I marry a man or what do I do when my boyfriend is less spiritual than I am? hi guys welcome back to my channel my name is erima if you haven't seen this face before if you're a returning subscriber to my channel hello what's up what's good welcome back to my channel as always so right now let's have the obvious conversation let's talk about this i'm going to be sharing this story from my perspective one of the things that crossed my mind when i decided i was going to follow god and just submit myself fully to to following god one of the things that crossed my mind was are you even sure you're going to find someone that will marry you with all oh, this your spirit coco and when i say spirit coco spirit coco is one of the is the way that in this part of the world they refer to people that are of people of faith have decided to follow god or people that they would theme as being overly religious so that's what spirit coco is so of course it crossed my mind i mean you would have to think about it if we are honest you thought about it too if you thought about it drop it in the comment section Let, let's start clearing the elephant in the room <laughs> right so you're in a place where you're thinking would i meet someone that would accept me Would i meet someone that is willing to you know be on this journey with me because being a christian there's a lot of things involved the most common people think about is no sex before marriage but trust me there are a whole lot of other things that you have to uphold when you're getting into a relationship and even more so when you get into marriage there's a lot more than sex before marriage so because of your convictions as a christian one of the worries that i find a lot of christian girls having is would i find someone that would go on this journey with me that i will tell no sex before marriage and the person will be okay with it that i will tell that i have to be this committed in church and the person will be okay with it that the person will not think of me as doing too much or the person will not think of me as being um too christianese and all of that it crossed my mind and if it did cross your mind please drop it in the chat box so i know that i'm not alone and of course because most christian girls want to get married they want to settle down they want to have a kingdom marriage you look around the church and it looks like sometimes you don't find so many of really the god-centric men or you find the god-centric men and you feel like they don't necessarily fit into what i want they are not what we would call spec so you are just in a place where I'm a Christian. I want to serve God. But the people that I'm meeting in church, the people that are I'm meeting in my Christian community, I would not necessarily say I like them like that. And the few ones I like, it looks like they are not really as born again as I think they are. <laughs> if you have ever faced this dilemma before, again, I will say drop it in the chat box. I really want us to start a conversation about this in the chat box, right? And something that we are not talking about as much is how people of the world, you know those world people, how they really like Christian girls because um for some reason they like the idea of us they like the idea of you know a good girl that probably would not cheat on them they like the idea of a good girl that would keep their home so where they can keep at home and be sure that the home is taken care of when you know while they can go and do other things and you're also in this mix where even the people of the world who might also be in church <laughs> let's not talk about that so the seeming people of the world are probably not the ones coming to you they have the charms they have the they have the steez <laughs> and you're like hmm this is what i want but then as you continue with the talking stage or even get into dating you will now realize that ah, this person this person is really not he's not really born again like that you see that there are some you know parts of your conviction that you people do not agree on and you now get to this almighty question should i marry a man or what do i do when my boyfriend is less spiritual than i am because at this point you are wondering if i do not take this chance now i might become 200 years old without a husband <laughs> i'm trying to make this a very light conversation but i know of course it's not a light conversation in any way but then that's that that's the dilemma for most christians they're like should i accept this guy he's okay he's not like he's an atheist he's not he's not i won't say he's an unbeliever but he's less spiritual than i am i understand some spiritual principles more than he does should i just settle down and know that this marriage settlement thing is out of the books for me let's talk about it from the scriptural perspective before you settle so i once was talking to this guy and the more i talked with him the more i got to know this guy i realized that we had 
two different sides of the coin <laughs> he says he's born again but there were a lot of things that he was doing there were a lot of things he was saying there was just a perception he had to life but i just knew that this one we are not going the same way but funny enough i was in that talking stage or whatever we call it now and i was thinking but this guy is not bad he's caring he's nice he's good looking so maybe i should just accept him maybe i should just i will work on him i will change him <laughs> when he marries me he will not be on fire of course i have to go to the lord in prayer and that is one thing i think that every believer whether male or female should do go to god in prayer what is god saying about a decision that is as as big as deep as serious as intricate as the person that you marry why are you not talking to god about it so i went to god in prayer concerning this guy and the lord began to take me through a journey the very first question the lord asked me is why do you think this guy is less spiritual it sounds like an easy question to answer but trust me it is not as easy because sometimes what we base off as spiritual or not spiritual are based off of our own emotions and interpretations so for example i'm just going to give you this instance right on top of my head if you are someone that prays really loudly just a hypothetical scenario you know you pray really loudly you have the whole um pentecostal vibe going on you're always probably screaming even when you pray and you meet someone that is very solemn more conservative about their worship right you would most likely think that this person is not as spiritual as you are you will most likely think that as you are shouting mm, mm, Rema, this that that you are more spiritual than the person but then does that necessarily mean that you are more spiritual than the person does that necessarily mean that this person is not spiritual or he's not born again or he's not a believer you see why you have to separate your emotions from what the real thing is scriptures will say in psalm 112 verse 1 praise the lord blessed is the man who fears the lord who finds great delight in his commands not somebody that is a good person you find delight in god's command another scripture that i'm going to read to you is first timothy chapter 6 verse 11 and it says but you man of god which is what all of us want to marry not man of god like pastor but you want to marry a man that is of god right he says but you man of god flee from all of this and pursue righteousness godliness faith love endurance and gentleness so the lord is basically in this scripture first timothy chapter 6 verse 11 laying out the the template of a man of god and he says you must flee from sin you must pursue righteousness you must pursue godliness faith love endurance and gentleness now this is the definition of a man that is spiritual or what i will call a man that is living in faith with god so if this man is not living this way you already know that you cannot be unequally yoked because in the real sense of it there are a lot of people that profess christ but they are not born again and that is not what you want for yourself you want a man that genuinely delights in god's command that when god says don't do this thing he will not be arguing with you he will not be telling you oh it's like this it's like that you know trying to bring his own maybe personal gain into the word of god to make it fit him that's the person that is spiritual not necessarily what your emotions tell you so be honest with yourself this person that i'm talking to or this person i'm married to does he delight in god's command i am not saying he should be perfect right but does he sincerely delight in god's command is he intentionally trying to be better trying to please god with his life trying to honor god even with the relationship that he's proposing or you are in with him so now that we have gotten this out of the way let's get into the cross of the matter which is what would you do or what should you do if you are dating someone or you're married to someone that is less spiritual than you are i first of all want us to take the husband part of it out of the game because now that you are married this is not the channel where you are going to hear about divorce this is not the channel where you are going to hear oh because your husband does not delight in the lord stand up and leave him in fact in fact there is a scripture i'm going to read that scripture to you right now so it's first peter chapter 3 verse 1 and i'm reading the passion translation because i personally love this translation it says be devoted to your own husbands 
so that even if some of them do not obey the word of God, your kind conduct may win them over without you saying a thing. I mean, even people that marry, you know, people that are spiritual or people that are born again and obeying the Lord, you still have to pray for your husband. So what you have to do is to pray for him and live a life that he would see and think, there's something good here that I want to change or transform into or that he would hunger to transform into. So that's out of the way now. Let's get into the people that have not entered into covenant. The people that are not, that have not said I do. The people that have not taken vows. Let's get into that conversation. So you plan on getting into a relationship with a man that does not understand the things you understand spiritually, that does not hold the same convictions as you do. While I'm not here to tell you what to do, I'm going to give you my own tiny bit of it. Somebody has to bend. Somebody is going to bend. There would be a compromise at some point. And because of how you know the man is placed in leadership over the woman i'm most tempted to believe that you the woman listening to me or watching me you are going to be the one that will bend so it's either you begin to shift your convictions about the lord to accommodate this other person or this person transforms and becomes you know meets you up where you are and i can tell you for a fact that you are not the holy spirit and you cannot change people. I was once in a talking stage with someone that I knew that we were not at the same wavelength spiritually. And one of the things I realized in that relationship was that if I went on to, you know, even getting into courtship with this person or marrying this person, I would have signed up to perpetually pull this person manually, <laughs> manually pull this person to the level that I was. I would have found myself in a position where I would have to keep explaining some things. I would explain why we had to tight. I would explain why I had to be in church. I would explain how I had to serve. I would there's been a lot of things to this person and I'm sure that this person would not get it. So I knew at that point that if I went on with that relationship that I would be frustrated in the marriage. I had to advise myself because when the Bible says that iron sharpens iron, we think it's a joke until you are iron and you come in contact with wood. And one of the very first things you will see iron doing when it comes in contact with wood is that it would be able to cut the wood. So if you're a lady at the first instance, because he's trying to impress you, he's going to do some things. He's going to, he's just going to try and be a good person to you. But once you get married to the person, once you continue cutting, the iron continues cutting the wood the iron at some point would get blunt and the iron would need to be sharpened wood cannot sharpen iron so when the scripture talks about iron sharpening iron it means that we should be in constant relation with someone that can strengthen us someone that can improve us somebody that can make us desire god more someone that when we look at the way the person is living their life we hunger and thirst to follow God more. I never ever get into this kind of relationships thinking that I have the capacity to turn somebody's life around. You do not. The only person that has that capacity, that has that ability to do that, is the person of the Holy Spirit. And even the Holy Spirit, for him to do that, you have to yield yourself to him. So do you see, God is even a gentleman. He's not going to force himself on anybody. He's going to be a long journey. What's my advice to anyone that is watching this? I would say, pray about it. And if you are not getting a clear cut instruction from the Lord, please do not go. If the Lord is not telling you go, don't go. And you also have to prepare your mind in case you decide to go, that there will be battles in front. There will be compromise in front. You might even lose your steam. You might lose your relationship. You might lose your passion. Or you will just be in a perpetual state of pulling someone along and one thing you know about pulling someone along is that you never get to where you are getting to as quick as someone that is just working on their own or two partners that are encouraging each other on that journey you won't get there as fast as they do or as soon as they do i have a lot to say about this but at this point i will just say let's let's continue the conversation in the chat box let's talk about it what are your thoughts about it do you think that everybody should be on the same spiritual wavelength do you think it doesn't matter do you think that you would catch up do you think that this conversation is even people being over serious they should just marry husband when they see them what are your thoughts about this let's continue the conversation in the comment section and if you know anyone that you think might 
you know enjoy this conversation or might want to engage in this conversation please share this video to them give this video a thumbs up subscribe to my channel if you're not subscribed and um yeah i want to know what you guys think and if you have more scriptural reasons why they should or they should not please drop them in the chat box let's turn it into a mini bible study unpacking situation in the comment section i love you all and i'll see you guys in my next one have i told you guys to give this video a thumbs up do it now <laughs> see you guys in my next one Mwah.